So, how to make your mobile app outstanding? This is the topic today for the next half an hour. Half, half an hour. Um, my name is Melinda Albert. I'm mobile app designer in so Android and iOS. And I have been doing this for um, almost five years now, and I'm doing only uh, app design and UX design for mobile applications. Um, so far, I had the chance uh, to work with some really awesome companies together, with really great teams and great projects. Um, a few of them are also um, featured in the Play Store or number one in the App Store. And um, I hope to um, share some knowledge with you. Um, so as a start, Let's play a game. I will show you three mobile applications without any name, and I would like you to guess uh, which application it is. Ready? Yeah. Great. Yes. You were the first one. Good. <laughs> Yes, good, good, you're the winner. <laughs> so the thing is, um, why do I show you these applications? Because um, you can immediately recognize them. And today I would like to talk about why or how you can do this also in your application, because um, if you follow the guidelines, it's the base and it's good and you should. For example, the Android guidelines, or the human interface guidelines, if somebody don't know it, here, here's the link. Um, but this is only one part of the outstanding UX design of an application. And um, for example, I have made a few sc uh, screenshots of three diff different applications. And as you can see, there is not really something which <laughs> which could make, make them outstanding. I mean, they follow the guidelines, obviously, great usability, obviously, but um, something is missing. And this is not only um, at iOS or Apple the case, also at an Android. And um, these are also different applications, a bit skinned, but you cannot really recognize, as we did in the game, which application is it. After a few seconds, maybe um, maybe because of the topic or the structure, but uh, alone because of the user uh, interface design, it's it's difficult. So every application looks the same, right? Um, these apps made something different, and these apps achieved to be immediately recognizable. And this is not only because they they have a good reputation and a lot of users, I think it's a circle. So if you make a good topic and a good uh, user interface, people know your app and love the, your app. So I have read a book uh, from Arden Wa uh, Walter. He's from MailChimp. And um, his book title was Designing for Emotion. And he made a um, really good graphic, which I would love to show you how the structure is of a good application. So if we build it up, so let's say we are, it's like building an, um, a building or a house. The foundation would be that the application has a function, because if the application doesn't have any function, then the users won't download it in the app store, they won't use it, there is no use of your application. So first, the, the foundation has to be that it is functional. The second step is, and I think you're the right people here sitting, it has to be reliable. So, um, example, if I have an appointment, um, I'm using always Google Maps, I'm riding the, the bike mainly, and I have to get there really fast. So, I switch on my Google Maps, and if it doesn't work, after the second time, I would delete the application. So, <coughs> No crashes, dear developers. <laughs> it has to be reliable. This is the second step after function. The third one is rather, I think, oops. Oh. The third step is rather that it should be usable. Um, this is something for, of course, the U UX experts. It's following the guidelines, know the, knowing the rules, um, good usability that the, the users immediately use, can use it and they don't, just don't have to think twice. This is, I think everything is obvious to this point. What Aaron says is um, 
there is a small tip of the iceberg which um, is mainly missing, and this is that the, the, the app is pleasurable. So it is not only that you, you use an app because you have to use it, but um, I don't know whether you have this uh, feeling sometimes if you use an application and you just make you smile, or, or you say, oh, that's awesome. For example, a loading um, symbol or, or a tiny tweak, which is just, just makes you laugh or smiling. And if I find something like that, I immediately make a screenshot so I can remember that because I think this is something which an app um, should have or can have, nice to have. So this is mainly missing um, to make your app outstanding on individual. So this is something I would like to talk about today, uh, and I try to cluster it. So I have one, two, three, four, five points I want to I would like to talk about. Um, of course, I could talk about these topics weeks, but um, I try to give you a small hint of each one um, so you can have a picture of what I mean with pleasurable. So the first one is typography, the second one is icons, then pictures, colors, and animations, of course. Huge topic. So <coughs> typography. Um, two examples, Yahoo and Airbnb completely different typography. The hierarchy is also different. Um, and um, somehow, they um, made it recognizable, immediately recognizable. So for example, Yahoo used thin typo. Um, the icons are also thin, Toot, PT, um, Strength haben Sie, uh, um, they have. Airbnb is rather a bit, um, bit um, um, rather not so light. And it matches completely the application. Um, so, what you don't or you can do in the typography is, of course, the first one. I <laughs> always seen uh, some, F okay, not always, but often seen applications, is just choosing the wrong font size. So, this is something which is not legible, of course, and um, maybe it looks nice and uh, it's uh, fancy, but if the user cannot read it, it doesn't make any sense. So, the first um, don't is uh, wrong font type. Um, the second one is that the typo is just too small. Uh, there are um, rules for it, 12 PT or FPT, iOS and Android. This is the minimum font size, and then you can play around and just adjust it. So this is the minimum. The third one is font pairing, and now it's getting exciting, because um, you can use, of course, Roboto or Helvetica. This is always a, a good choice. You should use it if you're not sure. But if your designer is a bit creative and would like to make uh, something special, of course uh, he can use or she can use other font types. Um, and you can even use two font, different font types. But pay attention to the matching because, or the pairing um, because uh, there are some rules about these um, just to design um, too, too much going in design details, I guess. But I wanted to let you know, you're developers, right? Hands up, developers? Yeah, OK, good. So just to know, um, there are uh, rules for it. You can pair it. You should pair it. And um, sometimes this tiny tweak can make your application a bit different and as the, the, the concurring apps. Um, if you're uh, unsure, there is a Google font pairing tool. You can use it. For example, you can say, OK, here in the example, I have used uh, Sanchez. And these are the matching uh, fonts to it. So it's pretty easy, I think. Even I, I take sometimes inspiration from that. <laughs> this is for you, especially guys, effects and styles. Sometimes uh, less is more. So you don't need shadows or uh, gradients or stuff like that, because we are going flatter um, this year. So um, just be careful with the, the effects on shadows. Uh, text length, uh, this is something for, <laughs> we have a project. Um, uh, I had a project uh, with a real estate company. I won't say the name. Um, and um, we had the detailed page really long. So it was just text. And um, the users, of, of course, said, yeah, it's maybe too long, and it's difficult to uh, read. So what can we do? 
um, snapper resolutions, you can truncate it, you can just um, shorten the text, uh, or you can stay here more, read more, and then lead the users for no uh, to another page, or you can say um, you have icons uh, and you just truncate the text or cluster the text differently. So there are several um, ways you can uh, solve this problem. The main thing is not too long because the, it's just difficult to read on a mobile in a mobile application. Do you have questions regarding the text? Okay, I can. No surprise, we have iOS and an Android icon set. Um, what do you think? What's the difference? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Something else? This is the outlines. So uh, the iOS apps have this really thin outlines, and I can remember when they occurred, um, everybody was like, oh, this is too, too thin, you cannot do that, it's lo it looks ugly. Well, they had a um, good reason for doing that. So the, the types also went thin, and the outlines of the types are also 2PT. It means if you uh, put next to really, uh, so really um, to the really thin typo, um, strong icons like Android, then it might um, be too much of the icons. So it's just a question of balance. So it means if you have thin typos, then it probably makes sense to make um, to match it with thin uh, icons, but which they did in this case. So I think they made a terrific job, but um, of course there are also other opinions. Um, so my advice is, if you have an iOS application, use the iOS um, icons. If they are uh, not customized icons, of course, try not to um, um, invent something new because the sharing icon, they, the users just know the sharing icon. They don't need something else there because they won't understand it. And the same is for Android. So uh, there are some platform-specific um, uh, differences. For example, the not only the look and feel, uh, but also, uh, for example, the sharing icon. Or even the action overflow um, there, this icon. You just cannot find it in iOS applications. And I often see, for example, Facebook had, uh, I think, uh, even have it now, the Facebook uh, message application. They just put the action overflow in the iOS application. You cannot do that, <laughs> even if you're Facebook. So, um, Because the users just simply don't know that. So um, be aware. Uh, this is, some, so for example, two screenshots with just normal um, standard um, um, icons. And this is an example, Airbnb. Because if you have one uh, platform and one app on one platform, it's easy. But if you have it in Android and in iOS, then you start to think, OK, what do I do with the icons? And uh, here, for example, Airbnb did it really good, really um, great way of um, putting it. Um, sharing icon uh, in the iOS application looks like the standard one. And um, they just adjusted it in the Android application. So this is a, something you should do. Um, maybe you can even adjust the style. So they have, for example, different colors here. So I think that's a good one. So, and it's getting interesting when you don't have standard uh, icons in your application, of course, invent uh, your own icon set. And this is what um, Duolingo did for, did, for example, or Yahoo News. Um, you only need a good icon <laughs> designer for that. And uh, this is something which uh, which uh, can make your app a bit outstanding and a bit different as uh, all the other applications. I like the icon set. I know. You also? So do's and don don'ts. Different strokes. You shouldn't. So if this is one application, you should use the same font uh, stroke as on the right hand side. Um, the detail, the degree of the detail. So if you pay um, attention, on the left-hand side, you can even see uh, the star in the stand. It's so detailed here. Um, and in another icon, in the same application, there is just an outline. So this is something um, just don't match together. Um, what you can do is um, detailed similarly detail the icons. Um, 
The next one is, I, and I see this, for example, all the time, different perspectives. So if you have frontal icons, use frontal icons everywhere and don't change the angle because it's, it's like not something which you can immediately recognize. This is not something you, you open the, okay, I do because this is my job, but this is something the normal users just, just don't do. Um, but they feel that something isn't good, something isn't professional. Maybe they cannot say it what, but these are some tiny stuffs which, which is good to have um, properly. So same perspective. Um, light source, and now I'm really fussy. <laughs> um, in this example, can you see the shadows, how they are falling? Exactly. So in the camera, it's from the top. And um, Schloss, what is Schloss in English? Oh my God. Lock, thanks. Locker? Lock, lock. In the lock, it is from the left hand side. So this is something you, you won't recognize, um, but you feel that it's strange. Um, the same light source um, is on the in the other example there. Um, this is from which side? From left. Yeah, from the left hand side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is something you should do. Uh, or if you have an icon designer, you can just uh, and he made, for example, or she made it differently. You can say, yeah, but the light source, you know, then you're good. So this is something you shouldn't do. Questions? Do you have questions so far? No? Okay. Pictures. So, pictures is, of course, also a huge topic because um, if you ask also a designer, they, they, uh, so, how to put it? Pictures, you can influence a lot with the, the quality, of course, the way of presenting your pictures. Um, there are several methods. Um, for example, in the Yahoo app, they have this uh, colored overlay on the, um, the hero images. Um, this is something I would recognize from, I think, thousand applications. Um, whether it looks good or not, um, you can talk about it, but this is something um, special. Um, in paper, the other application, um, the way they put the, um, the, the pictures is outstanding because they have a, a hero image and then ha they have some card, but in a, uh, cards, but they are in a um, special format. And you can just swipe through from left to right or the other way around. And I think this is also an interesting way for handling the, the, the images and the pictures. So. Um, there's, of course, other ways. For example, in Flip, and this is something which is at the moment trend and really trendy. Um, blurry backgrounds with a picture underneath, and then you have nice typo on it. Um, yeah, trends. It is something um, you can follow, and maybe it, it makes your app a bit different, but if everybody is following it, my grandmother always says it's not any more trend. Um, so um, you can do that, but uh, I think you don't have to. But this is also a way of handling your images. Duolingo had something different. They said no pictures, but they have graphics. And they had it uh, in the app everywhere. So the bright colors, the flat images, the, uh, the uh, flat icons, and a bit typo. And, um, I really like the way they did it, so uh, it is something which you could uh, recognize. Um, of course, I have other examples. Do you know Compact, the app? Of course. How many Android and uh, Android developer are here? Hmm. Okay, because this is an iOS application. Okay, makes sense. Um, where Compact is a news app, and uh, why I show it to you, because um, they have. Um, special way of image handling. If you can see, the pictures are cut in this, this angle and placed on the right hand side. So um, this is something also, because mainly how do the most of the apps do that? They put the image, make this format and put it on the left hand side. But of course you can do it also like this if, if uh, this is the, the main um, 
um, page of your application and maybe you want to make it a bit outstanding. So um, I think it's good and I hope that the Android application is also coming soon. Um, kitchen Stories, this is one of my favorite apps in the moment. I love cooking, so um, they made also a really nice job because card layout is coming and it's everywhere there. But somehow, um, with the image quality, they made, uh, made it different as uh, other applications. So um, I don't know what layers they use or what quality, but uh, I could recognize um, these images uh, immediately. And they also made a nice typo to it, um, something different. Maybe not legible sometimes, but it looks I think it looks great. Um, I'm not sure Kitchen Stories. I think they have also an Android application. Not sure. You can check it out later. So, do's and don'ts. Don't picture. If only you, if you only take one thing with you today, you can take this one, for example. This is the topic of the pictures, and um, it's not only applications, but also websites, which uh, make it uh, maybe, um, how to say, how to put it, um, unfinished. Um, stock images. Of course, you have the license, of course, it's professional, but the thing is, after a while, and this you can see in user tests, after a while, you as, as a user, you recognize that it's a stock image, something uh, was bought uh, in the marketing, um, from marketing uh, uh, people, and they just oversee it. So you have a look, okay, uh, application, you, you scroll down, stock image, stock image, you don't even uh, pay attention after a few seconds. You just, um, I don't know what's the, the, the English expression, um, ausblenden. You just oversee it, I think. Fade out. Where is Ben? Ben? Ben left. Ben left. Okay. So anyway, so you don't pay attention for it uh, anymore. But what you can do is uh, make the pictures uh, with context. So if you have a good story or it, it matches exactly that, and it doesn't look like the the girl and the the father like totally uh, unnatural then it is going to help your context and it is going to help the understanding also of, of uh, your application. So please do that. Uh, it's it's re really, really important. Maybe a small thing, but it has, uh, has a um, great effect. And of course, the quality of the images should also be okay. So not okay, but really good. Don't do that. Colors. So. Most of the applications have one color. So if you think of your application, how many colors do you have? Just shout it in. This is the wrong answer now. <laughs> Somebody? Two? You have two? One? Who has one? Yeah. This is, this is the thing, because um, maybe you have one corporate identity color, and you use mainly one color. But the thing is, you don't have to use only one color. So if you're really good, then you have um, a primary color, for example, this um, blue one on the top of it. Um, then you have uh, maybe alternative colors of this primary color, because it can be that the background is just um, not matching or you cannot put the primary color. Then you have al always two fallback options, the uh, alternative color one and the alternative color two. So you can take them. And of course, your accent color. The accent color is for call to action buttons, for switchers. And this is something I had um, a, a talk um, at and Android Stammtisch once, a few months ago. And I made the mistake to say, you can use your accent color um, maybe 10% uh, in your uh, application on one screen, because more is maybe too much. And then I think you were. Were you asking, Andreas, that um, how can I count out or how can I say how, how much is 10%? Or you cannot. Of course, you can uh, make um, a counting, but it is rather um, something you guess. So the thing I want to tell uh, you or say you is um, if you have an accent color, which is mainly one color in your app, don't use it everywhere. 
So don't use it for text and for, for the, the action bar and for the icons and I don't know where, um, because it might be too much and then you don't have any focus on in your, in your screen. Um, and also pay attention to, to the shades of uh, uh, black. Um, this uh, makes also a hierarchy in your application. So if obviously if something is um, um, uh, has a black shade or a tone, it is, it is something which uh, you see first. And if it is rather gray or a, a lighter gray, then it, if it is, of course, in the hierarchy less important. And this, this is the way you can structure, of, of course, um, uh, contents and text especially. So this is a good example of um, this is a good example of uh, uh, using the primary and accent color. The primary color is um, the blue one for the action bar there, and they had the fallback option using in the um, uh, status bar, and they had uh, the accent color for um, the floating action button or switches or, or text labels, you can tap on it. So this is a good example from, from material design. You should follow, and I think it's great. Um, don't use it for texts. And balance the primary and the accent colors always on your screen. So 10% is good, or even less for accent colors. So <coughs> last last um, uh, topic, animations. So animations are for me something which makes me smile or can make me smile. Um, but this is also something which, um, which is helpful when, uh, you're y when you want to um, show an element, for example, or, or, or lead your users in the application. Um, my taxi. Do you have this in mind, the loading, um, the loading animation of the car? It is just jumping. So if you, if you say, I would like to have a taxi, like in five minutes, you tap it in, and um, then it's, it's starting to load. And the car in the middle just starts to jump up and down, up and down. So you imme immediately get it, OK, this is uh, loading. And it's just funny, I think. So this is something you, c you can also do, not with the card, but something with the loading animations. It's also good. Facebook paper. The Facebook logo has a shiny effect while loading. It means it's pretty smart, because this is something um, you, can, um, you can push your brand. So they have to, because nothing else is happening on the screen, only this shiny loading anim animation on the text. So you, you immediately recognize, okay, this is Facebook I'm talking about, or I'm in, and uh, you get it, okay, it's loading. So this is also a good example. And the third one I really liked, also in paper, um, when you choose your topics, this is the setting. In this part, uh, these are the, the options you can ch uh, choose, and these are the upper uh, side is what you have chosen. And the thing with which they did at the very first time, you get to the settings, they scroll through the cards, and then in the middle, the middle one, they just push it slowly up and make it shake, and then bring it back. So you can understand, okay, so I can move it probably. I can even touch it and move it upwards because it was like, doing that. It helps the understanding, so um, I think it's green, made me smile. And to sum it up, you have several ways to make your app different as the concurring apps. This is the typography, the icons, pictures, colors, and animations. So um, I know that in most of the cases, Sometimes you have sprints, sometimes you have um, project length, and this is something which um, it, is a, it is a nice to have, but most of the applications just simply don't have the time for it or the budget for it. I know that because I had also a few projects and I, I have also always seen that. 
But if you have the opportunity to make something special with your designer, uh, I would definitely um, go in this direction. Maybe you only pick one and you say, okay, for me it makes sense to work rather with the typography and the icons, and I, have don't, any, uh, I don't have any pictures in my application, so uh, pictures um, doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Or just animations or transitions, this is also nice. Um, do you have any questions? Too much information. <laughs> okay, good. Then thank you very much.